Hello, Chevre. How are you? I hope you're all gesund, stark, and freilach. Begash misubiruchnis. Healthy, strong, and happy physically and spiritually. Hashem should help that all those that need a refuah shleima should receive one now and that the magefa should stop immediately. Afreilachin chedesh. Happy Rosh Chedesh Sivan. Today is a monumental, epic day in the history of mankind. As the Pasuk says, Ba'chedesh ha'shlishi, Letzeis b'nei Yisrael me'eretz mitzroyim, Ba'yeim azeh bo midbar Sinai. Mazel tov, congratulations. Today we arrived at Mount Sinai. And then the Pasuk says, Ba'yisru mefidim, Ba'yevei midbar Sinai, Ba'yachnu b'midbar, and then it says that they traveled from Mephidim, they came to Midbar Sinai, they rested, and everyone was together as one. So the commentators make a famous question, why does the Pasuk first say, and then it says how they got there. So the commentators speak that the reason why it starts first by saying this is the day they arrived is to underscore, to emphasize that how epic the event is. So therefore it starts off by saying that idea, by bo midbar sinai. But then the Pasuk is teaching us a lesson, how will we come to Torah? Therefore, the Pasuk follows and says, they traveled from Rafidim, which is one principle, one key. You have to go, graduate, get out of Rafidim, then by a voyu midbar Sinai, they had to come to a midbar Sinai. And then by Yachnu ba midbar, by Yichan Shom Yisro Negador. By Yichan Shom Yisro Negador. By Yachnu ba midbar is really the, the previous idea. As we'll soon explain. So we'll start as usual with the Posik from the Rebbe's capital. And we'll say Posik Chafei. Dovkali of her nafshi, my soul is stuck. My dovkali of her nafshi, my soul is stuck to the ground. Revive me in accordance with your word. So obviously, the Pashta Pshat in the Pasik means, my soul is stuck to the ground. I'm down and out, finished. I'm over. Hashem, save me. Mayday, Mayday, SOS. According to Chesidus, maybe we could say a totally different pshat. And that is the one which is very similar. And this is important coming before Matan Torah. <coughs> We've spoken already about the virtue of humility. And we spoke in previous lessons about why the Torah had to be given in a midbar, in a desert. And we explained many different things, but we didn't get into one of the most famous explanations that the Medrash brings down is because a desert represents humility. If it would be a developed city, so then you could say it represents, it projects man's accomplishments, man's progress, man's superiority. But if you say, where does Hashem give the Torah? In a desert, a barren place. It has nothing to show for itself. That's where the Torah comes down. Like we say concerning Har Sinai, the Mach Mikol because it's the lowest of all the mountains. The Torah rests in a place of humility. Being humble makes you a vehicle for Torah. And this is the famous part of davening, which Chassidus gives the interpretation. We say it three times a day at the end of Shvenesa, the nafshi ka'ofar l'kol let my soul be as humble as dust, before everyone, and then, and only then, can we say, Psach libi b'sedesecha. Open my heart to your Torah. So, Psach, so, v'nafshi ka'afu l'keil t'yeh. When my soul is as humble as dust, before everyone, that makes me a vehicle to be a prime recipient to receive the Torah. V'nafshi ka'afu l'keil t'yeh, then, Psach libi b'sedesecha. So too, this is the pshat over here. Dov kali offer nafshi. Because I'm making myself humble, I see offer, and I emulate offer to be humble. 
Therefore, that's a reason. When I have bittel, when I have humility, then I can be revived. I can be given new powers that are completely incomparable to whatever my achievements and talents were before. So, it says in Shulchan Aruch that from Reish Chodesh Sivan, Meishe Rabbeinu was busying himself preparing the Eden for Torah. So in different words, from today, even though we're preparing ourselves the whole Swedish Ha'emer, from today onward we have to say, let's get serious. Now it's really, we mean business. So, as I said, for example, there was this Pasek of today, talking about what happened today, by Yisur Mephidim, that is going to teach us about how we should be diligent and studious, the opposite of Rafidim. We might leave that for another day. By Yavoyim Midbar Sinai, Vayachnum Ba Midbar is the concept of humility that we just spoke about. And then Vayichan Shem Yisrael, Negedahar, teach us the idea of togetherness and brotherhood. And that also makes us a vehicle, Achtos, to receive the Torah. But in general, when a person thinks of receiving the Torah and preparing himself for a major Yom Tif, so it's about looking inward. Now, one of the most famous statements concerning Shavuos and a Medrash that the Rebbe spoke about many times is the Medrash where it says that Hashem said to the Jewish people when he was giving the Torah that I'm ready to give you the Torah, but I request you to present me with guarantors. Yeah? And the Jews said, in the end, our children will be the guarantors. First they said our ancestors will be the guarantors. Hashem rejected it. Then they said our prophets. And Hashem rejected that too. Finally they said our children will be our guarantors. And Hashem accepted it. So you could ask a major obvious question. Doesn't that sound pretty, pretty, pretty lame? Imagine I was going to give you a gift. They say, here, here's a gift, but I want a guarantor. And I give a person the gift, and the person says, you know what? My kids will be the guarantor. They'll cherish it, so to speak. What does it mean over here that the parents are saying our children will be the guarantors? But what about you? What about us? Shouldn't you first show how you yourself are completely enthusiastic for the object that you're about to receive, before saying, how can you, and, and also, how can you say, our children will be the guarantors? Could you guarantee that? How do you know what's going to happen in the future? So there's many ways you can answer this question, but I think one way we can answer, one way, and maybe the rest of the week we'll talk about some other ways, is that we see that one of the most direct ways how people change is by becoming parents. And they think to themselves, like, oh, I have a child, and my child's supposed to respect me. But then I have to ask myself a question, and getting back to humility, you have to look inside yourself honestly and ask, yeah, the Torah commands my child to respect me and to honor me. But what did I do to deserve that honor? Why should they respect me? Now, the truth is they're meant to respect you regardless. But if we're talking... You know, as advice, we're saying it ain't going to work. As the saying goes, you got to earn respect. And this is one of the truisms of life, that in many cases, if things work out in a good way, people have children, and then they actually do grow up, the parent. Because they ask themselves the question, am I a role model? Do I represent a person who lives up to a, sta a high standard of morals and ethics? Am I a person that doesn't cheat? Am I a person that has a strong work ethic? Am I a person that really, really is generous with my time and my money? Do I live my life for myself primarily? Or do I live my life primarily for others? And so on and so forth. So maybe you could say one answer. When the Jews answered Hashem, means the thought that we are going to be parents. And we have to be a leader for others and a role model for others. That is the guarantee. Because I don't want to be bankrupt. 
I'm not going to bring a child into the world or be a teacher or a rabbi and then not have anything to teach them. So that's what it means. And we see this in general. The Rebbe, when he spoke about children or teachers, the whole, one of the main Rebbe's, I would say, innovations in education is by charging people to be leaders, counselors, rabbis, why? Because when you will put yourself in that position, that itself will force you, will demand from you to rise, to elevate. And that idea that you are responsible for others, that itself will inspire you and elevate you to levels that you were never elevated before. And in a way you could say this is the idea of the Heshav Levavas HaYidei Abonim. The children will make the parents higher. And then it's the cycle. Once the parents are changed, the whole home is changed, then the children will also be inspired more and more. And the Rebbe said many stories in this vein about how you'll go out there, you'll get a girl who's four years old, and the whole home is unobservant. She'll start lighting a Shabbos candle. The next thing you know, she's going to Hebrew school, and the parents are keeping Shabbos, and then they started keeping kosher. And the Rebbe said very many similar stories many times. And it all started because you convinced a three or four year old girl to light a Shabbos candle. And the same thing recently, last week, they played on the gem video, the video of the Rebbe's that they show about the Rebbe spoke about how we should get Jewish children to have a letter in a Sefer Torah. And then the Rebbe spoke about a Russian child who's in Russia and he was approached that, do you want a letter in a Sefer Torah? And then this child came home and he asked his parents, Shtot koi Sefer Torah. What is a Sefer Torah? He never saw a Torah scroll in his life. And then the way the Rebbe described it from that conversation and that question that the child asked, Shtot koi Sefer Torah, the whole house was transformed and turned over and they went from level to level. So this is what we should be thinking about today as we are in our homes, inward, in our isolation situation, that we're saying our children will be the guarantors. How? And the answer is, first and foremost, by us being role models. And that means that the way you will become a role model is when you think about your children. That what do I stand for? For them, so then so be it. Think in such a way because this is a guaranteed way to help you climb in your spiritual ladder of success. Maybe you should shut up, that we should all think this way and improve. And through that, we'll all be vehicles for the ultimate revelation of the great Gilui revelation of the Torah Hadasha with Mashiach's coming this Shavuos. Take it from Yad Mamish. Posting. From my home, your man in Melbourne, Be'ez Hashem Mizborech.